Hey, welcome back. With everybody doing films about Oppenheimer, I thought that I would do a film about Barbie. No, of course, I'm only joking. There's two fantastic stories that kind of get swept under the carpet about the Los Alamos invention of the atomic weapon. Today, let's look at why bombs really explode and what happens if they don't. So first of all, excuse me, I'm not a nuclear physicist. Anything that I get way wrong, you know better, correct me and everybody in the comments. That's why I say the truth is out there because you are a nuclear physicist. I'm a science filmmaker, but there's two science filmmaking stories that I think the media and science television and social media are ignoring, and they're fantastic. The first one's really important. Radioactive material doesn't explode. It was only a theory. The classic E equals MC squared by Albert Einstein talks about the vast liberation of energy from matter if that energy could be released but it can't. Nothing decays in an explosive form in the way that an atom bomb does. They needed to find a way to actually make them go bang. And that's this guy's work. The mechanism to produce a self-sustaining chain reaction that's super fast and makes things go bang needs neutrons. Neutrons? They hadn't been discovered but they soon were in the Cavendish Laboratory at Cambridge University. And as soon as the neutron, the non-charged part of the core of an atom was discovered and isolated, you could build a bomb. So hold that very oversimplified piece of information in your lovely head, because we're now going to look at the other problem of actually making material that could explode. First of all, did you know that every nuclear power station is an atom bomb? Well, it is. It's just an atom bomb that is controlled. Those pesky neutrons, instead of going bang, 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 and producing a bomb, go bang, 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 and just produce heat. They're moderated using boron, water, and other materials. So the core of a power station, a nuclear power station, gets hot, not hot enough to melt it, not turn it into Chernobyl, but actually just have a sustained chain reaction to produce enough heat without melting the casing to make water or liquid sodium or gas hot enough to produce steam to produce electricity. But if you didn't moderate, every single nuclear power station, basically what you've got is enough fissile material to make a bomb. But you don't want that to happen. And the key thing is neutrons. Remember that? I just mentioned them. You need a material that freely liberates more than one neutron, maybe more than two, and then each one will bump into another one, release another two, that releases another two, duh, duh, duh. chain reaction. But radioactive elements that release multiple neutrons don't really occur in nature because they would decay. The stuff that we dig out of the ground, the uranium ore, even when we refine it into uranium metal, won't easily form a chain reaction. It would be better if you could make a an isotope, and I'll explain what that is, of uranium that liberates more neutrons when it divides fission. So on the Scott Manley channel and Paul from Curious Droid have all talked about uranium-238 and turning it into uranium-235. What's all that about? I like to take the big picture and kind of explain, what's the 238, what is that? Well, that's an isotope, and that's actually a weight, an atomic weight. Both occur in nature, but if you were going to drop a bomb on some enemy country at the end of World War II, a bomb made of uranium-238, which is a naturally occurring uranium metal, which you would refine from uranium ore, you would need, they worked out something like two tons. I'm exaggerating a big bit of it, because it doesn't easily produce enough neutrons to make a chain reaction. But uranium-235, which does occur naturally, 
but in incredibly small amounts produces lots of neutrons and you would only need a kilogram. Well, you could fly a bomb that's a kilogram. Originally, they thought an atom bomb would have to only be on board a ship. So let's make lots and lots and lots of uranium-235, the more neutron-releasing isotope, sorry to use these technical terms, of uranium. Wow! That was the most expensive, the biggest project ever done by man ever in the history of the world, Hanford, to gather the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest percentage of naturally occurring 235 from the bulk of 238. A sheer gram of uranium-235 was, say, worth a million US dollars in 1940s because of the amount of money, electricity, manpower and investment in liberating it and separating it from the, more commonly, 238. So 235, which is going to make a bomb which you could fly in an aeroplane and explode, aha, we'll get on to that, was so precious. And because it was so precious, you didn't want a damp squib. Meaning, if you tried to explode it and it didn't really work and you threw uranium-235 all over the Almogordo desert, it'd be a giant waste of money. So they invented Jumbo. And Jumbo is my second story. I've reached out for you to Jumbo's engineer, the historian who knows all about well, what was Jumbo. First of all, it's massively beautiful, but very, very interesting. It's a containment vessel. It's hundreds of tons of thick, I think it's about eight inch thick steel in a bottle. And this is how it worked. And a lot of channels on social media are skating over this. I'm going to tell you how Jumbo really worked. The idea was, if you exploded your first test, Trinity test bomb inside this steel flask, and it didn't really go off, and it didn't actually produce a chain reaction and an atomic explosion, Inside the case would still be all your really precious uranium-235. You could get rid of the rubbish, take out the uranium-235, fix the problem and try it again. But if it did work and you got a chain reaction and a first atomic bomb, Jumbo would be vaporized. Kaboom! In fact, they were slightly worried it would become a giant hand grenade. But it would probably just go poof in the extreme X-ray and gamma ray and other rays emitted by a first atomic bomb. So that was the plan. It was built in Baltimore in top secrecy. Nobody working on a project really knew what it was for. And it cost 12 million US dollars in the 1940s to make. And they hadn't got an authorised budget for it. It was a bit of a fix-it. Getting it from the steelworks in Baltimore over to New Mexico was a nightmare. It was actually too heavy, too big to fit on a rail car. And in the end, they transported it by road on a trailer covered with tarpaulins with nobody knowing what it was for. The bottle that holds the bomb... So that was the plan, the super precious uranium-235 that was separated at Hanford using a centrifuge was put into Jumbo, surrounded by the second most amazing technological leap that actually made atomic bombs work, and that is focused conventional charges, a way of exploding a sphere of TNT and other explosives, I don't know really, in a nanosecond altogether. And if it didn't quite go off altogether, well, it was fine because you were inside Jumbo and it just would go fizzle and you'd get your uranium back. But at the last moment, Oppenheimer, not Barbie, decided not to use Jumbo because they did this. This is just the conventional bombs, the focus charges exploding. And when it worked, all nanosecond timing, Robert Oppenheimer 
not Barbie, decided to carry out the first atomic bomb, the Trinity test, up on a tower in a sphere of conventional explosives. And, well, it worked, as we know. But that left the Department of Defense, or whatever they were called, the Army, at the time with this incredibly large metal embarrassment, Chumbo. It was so expensive, and they had not authorized its cost, they buried it. A few years later, they decided to dig it up and try and blow it up by putting a very large bomb in it in a way that was uncontrolled that kind of blew off both the end caps. And you can see part of the secret jumbo if you visit the Trinity site today. I hope those stories are interesting. What exactly is uranium-235? Why the bomb was never going to explode until neutrons were discovered at the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge, and Jumbo, the giant bottle that was to contain the bomb when it didn't quite work. I've skated over things. I've made generalizations. There's lots more to that story. The reasons behind things, the funding, the actual physics. I am a filmmaker for you. Hopefully I've intrigued you with that story. I've reached out to Jumbo's engineer and hopefully if he's up for a Zoom call, I'll interview him and bring him here to Patreon and share it with YouTube eventually. So thanks for watching. Become a patron, support this type of research because I know you're interested in these kind of stories. If you're watching on YouTube, hi. <laughs> Please press like if you liked it. Please subscribe. And if you already have subscribed, thank you very much. YouTube aren't sending you notifications. So please occasionally check my channel and see if I've posted a new film on YouTube. Or you can always see them first on Patreon. Because of you, the truth is out there.